It was late one winter night, long past my bedtime, when Pa and I went owling. There was no wind, the trees stood still, a giant statue, and the moon was so bright the sky seemed to shine. Somewhere between us, a train whistle blew, long and low, like a sad, sad song. I could hear it through the woodland cap. Pa had pulled down over my ears. A farm dog answered the train, and then a second dog joined in. They sang out trains and dogs for a real long time. When their voices faded away, it was as quiet as a dream. We walked on toward the woods, Pa and I. Our feet crunched over the crisp snow, and the little gray footprints followed us. Pa made a long shadow, but mine was short and round. I had to run after him. Every now and then to keep up, and my short round shadow bumped after me. But I never called out. If you go owling, you have to be quiet. That's what Pa always say. I had been waiting to go owling with Pa for a long time. We reached the line of the pine trees, black and pointy against the sky, and Pa held up his hands. I stopped right where I was and waited. He looked up as if this, as if searching the stars, as if reading a map up there. The moon made his face into a silver mask. Then he called, Who, 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 who? Then the sound of a great owl. Again he called out, and then again, after each call, he was silent, and for a moment we both listened, but there was no answer. Pa shrugged, and I shrugged. I was not disappointed. My brothers all say, sometimes there's an owl, and sometimes there isn't. We walked on. I could feel the cold, as if someone's icy hand was palmed down on my back and my nose, and the top of my cheeks felt cold and hot at the same time. But I never said a word. If you go owling, you have to be quiet and make your own heat. We went into the woods. The shadows were the blackest things I've ever seen. They stained the white snow. My mouth felt furry. The scarf over it was wet and warm. I didn't ask what kinds of things hid behind black trees in the middle of the night. When you go owling, you have to be brave. Then we came to a clearing in the dark woods. The moon was high above us. It seemed to fit exactly over the center of the clearing. And the snow below it was wider than the milk in the cereal bowl. I sighed and Paula held up his hand. At the sound was dark over my mouth and listened hard. And, Paul, and then Paul called, Hoo, 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 hoo. and I looked so hard my ears hurt. My eyes got cloudy with the cold. Pa raised his face to call out again, but before he could, I, oh, oh, I opened his mouth and echoed, came threading its way through the trees. Hoo, 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 hoo. Pa almost smiled, then called back. Hoo, 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 hoo. Just as he, just as if he was, uh, j just as if he and the owl were talking about supper, or about the woods, or the moon, or the cold. I took my mitten off my scarf, off my mouth, and I almost smiled too. The owl's call came closer. From high up in the trees, on the edge of the meadow, nothing in the meadow moved. All of a sudden, an owl's shadow, shadow, part of the big tree shadow lifted off and flew right over us. We watched silently with the heat in our mouth, the heat all over those words. We had not spoken, the shadows moved again. Pa turned on his big flashlight and caught the owl just as it was landing on a bridge. For one minute, three minutes, maybe even a hundred minutes, 
we stared at one another. Then the owl pumped its great wings and lifted off the branch like a shadow without sound. It flew back into the forest. Time to go home, Pa said to me. I knew then I could talk. I could even laugh out loud, but I was a shadow as we walked home. When you go owling, you don't need words or warm or anything but hope. That's what Pa said. The kind of hope that flies on silent wings under a shining moon. And that is the end of Owl's Moon.